Hey everyone, welcome back to another rowing video. In this video, we're gonna be doing a rowing form analysis on the 500 meter row world record. That was rowed by Phil Clapp, who is a beast of a man and a giant of a man as well. Six foot nine, 270 pounds about, and he rode the 500 meter row on the Concept 2 in a 110.5 split average. One minute, 10 seconds for 500 meters. It's absolutely insane. And we're gonna take a look at exactly how he made that happen, how his rowing form made that happen because there's a lot of really interesting things that happen during a 500 meter sprint that might be considered as taboo or things you would not want to do when it comes to longer duration rows like 2,000 meters, 5,000 meters, half marathons, etc. The 500 meter row really is a beast in and of itself. It's a sprint, but it is an excruciatingly long sprint. And Phil even said it, his own strategy for this is to row as hard as he can every stroke until it's done. We're gonna see exactly how that plays out and we're gonna get right into it. So with that, let's hop in and let's see Phil crush this row. Let's take a look at his rowing form. Hey, look, I'm smaller and in the top left corner now. That way we can see everything about his rowing form. And I also increased the size of my cursor here, made it a nice bright yellow so we can see exactly what's going on. And by the way, if you want personal rowing form review from me, be sure to check out my website, trainingtall.net. Go to the form reviews section and you and I can work personally on making your rowing form great, whether you're training for sprints or long duration rows, be sure to check that out. I also have eBooks and my rowing workout app as well. It's all on my website, check it out. All right, let's get into this. All right, so let's take a look at this 500 meter row. We're gonna look at the first few seconds of him starting this off. Let's see how it goes here. So notice, high rate, super intense, jumping up, going back, jumping up, going back, and look at those splits, 104, 105, 106. Absolute pure power within those first few strokes. And after he kind of gets the system up and going, you can see his stroke rate is slowing down just a little bit, but he is yanking on this thing. And so what I wanna do before we get into the middle of this, let's go back to that very beginning. Let's go back to where he started. I wanna take a look here, especially at these first few strokes that he does to get the system up and going. We're gonna change the playback speed here. We're gonna slow it down so we can look at how his form is because this is some very interesting rowing form compared to what you would consider to be correct rowing form. So we can see here, as he comes up to the front end, look at his body lean here, the leg bend and the body lean. We can see that his torso lean here is absolutely curved at like crazy. It's super curved, but it's super extended. It's super leaned forward. And that is because when it comes to maximizing your power when sprinting and rowing, you have to work on the hip swing, the body swing. That is way more important than the actual legs portion. The hip swing, the body swing is most important when it comes to generating peak power. You can even see this on the force curve option where you look at the force curve of a elite rowers, peak force is generated when the body goes from here and swings back. You push and swing back. And so it's that body lean that he has to get as much out of as possible. And it's super curved here because that's how you get those extra inches. Is this safe for your back and for your posture? Not necessarily, but this guy's going for a world record here and he needs every inch he can get. Even at six foot nine, we need as much body lean as possible. And that's what he's trying to achieve here. Now notice, as well with his layback, it's very complementary to that. So he's not cutting his layback short, he's still swinging those hips through, again, emphasizing the full hip swing and then racing himself back up. Now, a common issue is people cutting themselves up vertically at the back end, cutting the back end so you can come up faster, whereas we wanna really make the most out of that hip swing. And so, but in order to keep the stroke rate super high, what does he have to do when he comes back up? We can see right here, you can see he's kind of bending his knees and his arms and his body all at the same time. We can see that he's not really sequencing it out one after the other like you would do with long efficient rowing form, but it's because he can't. There's no time to really sequence yourself out in a proper way when you're trying to race the strokes per minute over 50 and you're trying to generate as much power as possible. It's literally lean swing, lean 
swing. That's how the system gets up and going. Now, I want you to look here as he drives. I want you to look at his arms. Notice when he drives, you can see his freaking massive arms, first of all, but you can see that his arms bend a lot. You might have heard in rowing that having arm bend on the drive is, you don't want that, right? You want to hang from straight arms. Here's the thing, this guy is strong enough to hang from straight arms, but there comes a point when you're racing the row so fast and you're pulling, you're pushing and swinging so hard, you just can't keep your arms all the way straight. And that's not really holding him back in this sense because he's still using every ounce of strength he can in his arms and his back to power this short sprint. Remember, this is only gonna be a minute and 10 seconds. This form is not sustainable for a long duration 2000 meter row. And so as far as keeping straight arms goes, you don't really have to. But you can see here that he is doing his best to engage the back muscles by keeping his hands super high at the front end. Do you see this right here? Big mistake that's made is letting our hands drop down. You can see that by keeping his hands super high, his chain for the most part is able to go straight in and straight out of the machine, which is most important when it comes to maximizing and translating the force from your legs into the handle. If you let your hands drop down, when you press your legs, those first few inches, the chain has to snap back up into position. And so that's why you can see him with this super big body lean, this super big reach of the arms and keeping them nice and high. That's how you connect the power in your drive. Now let's take a look at his legs real quick here, his legs and the compression. His leg compression is not the knees over ankles that you would see in more long duration rows like 10Ks, 5Ks, half marathons, etc. It's a lot shorter. And that's because the emphasis when it comes to power generation on these short rows is the hip swing more so than the leg compression. And if you think about what does it mean to be explosive in your legs, think about how you would jump. How would you jump if you were gonna jump as high as you can? Would you squat down all the way butt to the ground and then try to jump up? You wouldn't. You would bend your legs kind of like a half squat and then jump to the sky. It's the exact same principle here. Our muscles are elastic. And so when it comes to stretching and loading the quadriceps like he's doing here, you can only bend your legs to about 90 degrees before they reach past that point where you can't contract them fast enough. He needs a quick contraction to get up and explode back, to get up and explode back. We need He needs that quickness. And that's why he's keeping his heels planted on the rower for the most part. But if you look really carefully, you can see actually that his heels kind of come up a little bit when he comes to the front end. Why is that happening? Why is he coming up slightly heels up? And why are his toes flexing as he finishes? because we're rowing a 500 meter world record here, people. You, at this point, you can see right here on his shoes, you can see how tight those foot straps are on his feet, how tight he's got his feet down, and he has to use his feet to pull himself up. Is that good rowing for long term? It's not, you don't wanna be relying on your foot straps to pull you up for the most part. But when you're sprinting a max effort row with his mindset of every stroke needs to be as hard and as fast as possible, that's that reliance on the foot straps. And so you can see his toes flex up to pull him up and it's the equal and opposite reactions, right? He uses his toes to pull himself up, therefore he ends up rocking forward on the toes, the heels lift up slightly. But what's more important is his leg angle, which he's getting about that 90 degree jumping angle where he can jump back fast. Okay, so if we watch a little bit more here, it's the same kind of principle here as he lengthens out into the middle of the row. I'm gonna go ahead and change the speed back here. We're gonna go back to full speed and really see how he approaches this middle portion, this real tough one where he's just grinding out. We can see his split is getting slower and slower as he goes along. That's just human anatomy, human physiology through a row like this. He started in the 104s and is slowly slowing down, but what is he still trying to do? No matter what, even though the split's slowing down, What's he doing? He is fighting beyond belief to keep the rate high and keep the power. There's no drama. There's no, I'm tired, I'm gonna slow down. He keeps the rate high. He goes up, swings, goes up, drive, swing, goes up, drive, swing, and even through all the way to the finish line until the things, until the screen says zero. It's the same principles over and over again. So what are the big takeaways here? Let's rewind a little bit. I'm gonna let it play out and we're gonna go over the big takeaways. 
when it comes to sprinting, it's a fight from start to finish. You pick up that handle and you go hard until that screen says zero. There's no chance to really settle in. You wanna get up, you wanna attack, and you wanna go. You wanna attack with a shortened leg compression, bending your knees to about 90 degrees, and that's about it. Not focusing on long strokes, but fast, quick, explosive strokes. Emphasizing the body lean and swing, getting your torso forward, arms reached, drive and swing, huge body swing, length and leverage in the torso and through the hips is most important. Keeping your hands as high as you can at the front end and just putting up the good fight. An absolutely insane attempt. And you can just see the pain in his face as he finishes these last few strokes, but the fight is still there. For most of us, that pinch really hits at about 150 meters to go, where your body's going to want to slow down and shut down. Keep the rate high, keep jumping, keep leaning and swinging. Absolutely amazing to watch this to watch this guy row. It was really fun to uh, to do a little form analysis here, and I'd be curious to hear what you guys think. How do you approach your 500 meter rows? And did you pull any takeaways from this? What do you think about um, rowing 500 meters? Even though it's not necessarily considered like the official rowers' distance, we can just see that things really need to change and deviate away from good rowing form in order to really achieve max power and max effort on a 500. So let me know what you guys think. And again. Be sure to check out trainingtall.net, my website, for training plan ebooks, form reviews. You and I can work one on one. You can join my coaching program that kicks off at the start of every month 20 day crash course in rowing to make you a better rower with live workouts. You can also check out all of my, uh, my eight workouts on my app, Just Row, as well. So check all that out if you're interested. And subscribe if you want some more rowing stuff and fitness stuff from me. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.